Hey, hey, hey. Time for another out of this world story from our space. My ex-wife cheated on me and I got revenge by humiliating her. My cheating story is one I have always wanted to share, but didn't because it makes me feel like I'm an a-hole every time I remember it. My cheating ex-wife and I met at one of the rare parties I attended in high school. I remember seeing her and thinking that she was a stunner. I was a pretty good looking guy, still am, as evidenced by my new wife's constant adoration. And the girls in my school usually try to get close to me. I wasn't really interested in them, but for some reason, I was attracted to her. When I told my friends about her, they warned me off saying she already had a boyfriend and that they were pretty serious. Because of that, I was content to stay away from her at the party and just enjoyed the scene. Somehow, she kept coming into my line of sight. I paid no attention to her and just assumed that it was coincidence. It wasn't. She had been doing it on purpose because she wanted me to notice her. And we started talking and I asked her about her boyfriend. She had told me that things weren't really going on well with them. We talked all through the party and exchanged phone numbers that night. I forgot all about her until when I got a notification on Facebook that I had a new friend. She added me on Facebook and liked a couple of my pictures. We started talking after that, but I was conscious to keep boundaries because I knew she was in a relationship. It didn't stop her from trying to move on me. Then she started complaining about how she had been trying to get together with me, but I had been ignoring her attempts. I told her that there was no way I was going to move on her when I knew she had a boyfriend, no matter how much I liked her. She called me weak and stupid and blocked me on Facebook. I won't lie, I was pretty bummed then. I focused on other things, but I always felt the pang whenever I ran into her on the street or parties. Then, out of the blue, she started texting me again. I was suspicious at first, but it seemed like she had no ulterior motives until later. She explained that she had tried to work things out with her boyfriend, but it had ended badly because she figured that she liked me more and that she had broken up with him to be with me. In retrospect, that should have been a red flag to me, but high school me was ecstatic. I played it cool by asking her to let us take things easy, but the truth was, I was smitten with her. Later, I found out that her boyfriend skipped town to join the military. We had already written our finals, so what it meant was that he wasn't going to be around to attend the graduation ceremony. We became official after that, her ex left town. And we had fun fooling around everywhere, wasting time before we went to college. Unfortunately for us, we were careless and she got pregnant. She found out that she had been pregnant for about two months, which meant that she had gotten pregnant at the very beginning of her relationship. Both our parents were extremely conservative and they saw to it that we got married before she gave birth. We were both 18 and clueless about what we were going to do with our lives, but I knew we both had to go to college. We both deferred our admission for a year so that we could wait until we could figure out what we wanted to do. I got a job working as a grunt at a construction company and another one at his night shift cashier at 24 seven pop and mom store. The goal was to save enough to go back to school. She got a job as a waitress at a diner, but quit when her pregnancy progressed into the eighth month. So the burden was left to me to make money for groceries and bills. We were lucky that my parents gave us a two bedroom cabin to live in, rent free, so that eased up things a little. But I still couldn't afford to go to college on what I was earning. My parents helped out when they could, but otherwise, we were on our own. Before she gave birth, I was starting to feel resentful of the fact that I was the one who was working hard to get us to college. But when our daughter arrived, I felt like I was making a real difference. I felt like a man. We named her Sue after the nurse that had delivered her. After our daughter became three months old, we decided that my ex would go to college first. I had gotten promoted at the construction place to foreman, so the pay was much better, but we still couldn't afford to go at the same time. She was smarter than I was, so I knew that it was a better decision. I asked my parents for a loan so we could afford tuition for her first year, which they gave us. I found another job to the two I had already. She went off to college, leaving our daughter with me. It was hard juggling all my jobs and childcare, but somehow I made it work. My mother kept Sue with her most of the time, so I didn't have to worry about her so much. Sue was an angel. She didn't cry or fuss much, so it made it much easier to take care of her. During college breaks, her mother would come home to take care of her, but it was mostly just the two of us. I noticed that my ex would get antsy whenever she came home. She didn't carry Sue except for when she really had to and would sometimes leave her crying. I chalked it up to resentment about having to take care of a child when you were barely an adult and missing out on having fun. I brought it up at the time, thinking that she would fix up, but it led to our first real fight. She accused me of being selfish and not understanding what she was going through. I yelled at her, calling her an ingrate for not understanding what I had to go through for her to attend college while I was barely getting any rest from all the jobs I was doing. I told her that she was welcome to drop out of school so we could switch places. We eventually resolved the fight, and that was the end of our fight. She became calmer and more helpful around the house. I thought that was the end of it. 
When she eventually graduated from college, she got a job working in the HR department of the only major company in town. Because the nature of our work differed, she earned slightly more than I was. The next thing we thought about was getting a house. The cabin was fine, but we wanted more kids in the future, and we wanted to be financially capable first. But because of her student loans, we had bad credit, so we could not get a mortgage. We decided to pool resources together to pay off her student debt, so that it would be easier for us to move. I decided to hold off going to college until we had paid off most of our debts. Because of this, I skimped and saved and went without a lot of things so we could afford to pay off our debts. My clothes all became worn and white at the edges because I was always washing them. I kept wearing the same pair of boots everywhere and had only one pair of shoes. For Sue, she wore clothes passed down from her cousins. Only my ex was getting new stuff because she claimed that she had an image to maintain. I didn't begrudge her nice things, but I'd rather she got our daughter nice stuff instead. I continued on as usual without thinking about the increasingly selfish attitude of my wife. We were good together. Things became slightly easier when she got promoted at work. I told her to just handle household stuff with her money while I used my salary to pay off her debt. Between her increased income and the reduced student debt, we were able to move to a better part of town. Sue was closer to the kindergarten she attended and one of us could hurry back to pick her up when the day ended. Everything went downhill when she got another promotion. I was proud of her, given how far she had come. I didn't know that I'd come to regret everything later on. Part of her new duties was traveling to other sister companies in other states. Sue and I didn't have any issue with it, given the fact that we had gotten used to her not really being around. She was usually on the road for days, and she'd come back missing me and be really horny. But after one particular trip, she came back and started giving attitude. I thought maybe something went wrong on the trip and decided to give her space. I brought her favorite flowers and chocolate, and then I went to my parents so she could have the day to herself. When we got back, she seemed fine again. She apologized for being a witch. But it was just the first time. She started going on more trips and acting out when she returned. I asked her to take a break and it turned to a fighting match between us. I didn't like such a situation for our daughter, so I tried as much as possible not to stay in the house whenever I knew she was going to be back from her trip. Then, her ex came back to town. He had hit it big with crypto and wanted to retire. The construction company I worked for was hired to work on the house he was going to be living in. As the foreman, it meant I got to interact with him a lot. I found out that he was a pretty chill guy, so I invited him over a couple of times for dinner. At the time, my wife was on one of her numerous trips. When she got back, it was the same routine of crankiness, followed by constant attention. I didn't bother to let her know that her ex was back in town. When she found out and discovered that I knew, she went ballistic. She yelled about me letting old wounds back in her life and how I betrayed her by befriending him and etc. When I couldn't take it anymore, I left because I wasn't going to let her drive me into getting me angry. I didn't bother going to pick Sue up at my mom's because I knew I wasn't going to be spending the night at home. The next day, when I went back home, she had gone to pick Sue up from my mom's. She cleaned the house and lit candles everywhere. She had cooked dinner and everything. She made sure to cook my favorite. I was initially going to reject it, but for the sake of peace, I accepted it. Now at this point, I am sure that I look like some wimp, but the truth was that, even though I had been forced to marry her out of necessity, I truly loved her. I also didn't want Sue to grow up with just one parent. I loved Sue so much, even more than I loved my ex. So I continued, trying to patch things up. Then she started ignoring my messages. I liked texting at work so I would know if she intended to go and pick up our daughter at school or not, or if she was going to be home late. She stopped replying to my messages, and whenever I asked her why she didn't reply, she would tell me that she had been too busy at work to check her phone. I found it hard to believe because she was always attached to her phone. During the lockdown period, I knew how she went almost everywhere with her phone, even the toilet. I knew her password, but even if I wanted to snoop around her phone, I couldn't because she was always with it. I caught her smiling at her phone a couple of times before bed, and when I asked her why she was smiling, she told me it was one of her coworkers. Then there were the gifts. She received flowers a few times from an unnamed source, along with the chocolates. When I asked her who had sent the flowers, she had claimed to not know. At the time, it seemed harmless because it was just flowers and they weren't even her favorite. She had even gotten the ones she was allergic to at a point and she had complained when I trashed it because she thought it would be a waste to throw them away. She started changing her style. She had a different haircut and bought new clothes because she felt she needed a change. I wasn't complaining because her new style suited her a lot and I liked seeing her all dressed up. It was when she started acting up again that I started suspecting that something was wrong. There were times that she would refuse to have anything to do with me. She would refuse to sleep in the same bed that I was sleeping in and go to sleep in the guest room instead. After I tried talking to her a few times with no results, I left her alone. Then, after her mood swings, she would transform into a tigress in bed. If I was too tired, 
She would give me massages and try to end it with sex. Most of the time, I was into it because I didn't know when the switch would go off and I'd be stuck with a sully witch again. But the nympho periods began to dwindle until we could go a whole month without having sex. At this point, I was too busy with work and trying to learn how to program that I didn't really notice. But one day, I misplaced my phone and asked her to borrow hers so I could call it. She left it with me and went to the bathroom. I found my phone and I was about to return hers when I found a suspicious text on it. It read, when am I going to get to see you next? My senses started tingling. I opened the conversation and started reading through. It turns out that it was some guy in one of the sister companies she was always traveling to. The two of them had been having sex almost every time she traveled for a work trip. They had even taken a vacation together. She had been telling him that she was going to get a divorce and how I rarely spent the nights at home and how she was sure that I was also cheating on her with the company secretary at my workplace. The guy was married with kids and I suspect that he only wanted sex from her. They had wild texts going back and forth from them since her last travel. I was devastated, but I realized that there was no way I could continue forcing myself to work on a marriage. I knew she was a selfish woman, but I didn't know that she was a lying, cheating skank as well. I returned her phone quietly to her and left the house. I was devastated to say the least. I wandered around a bit and before I knew it, I found myself in front of Mark, her ex's house. I thought about ringing the doorbell, but wondered what I was going to say to him. I was leaving when the door opened and Mark came out. He asked me to come in and talk. Apparently, he had something that he wanted to tell me. He told me that he had been wondering how to tell me because he didn't want to lose my friendship, but he knew he had to let me know. Apparently, my scumbag ex-wife wasn't only a liar and a cheat, but a blackmailer too. She had told Mark that Sue was probably his child given the fact that she had slept with him around the same time she became official. She was asking him for child support for Sue. Mark showed me all the messages that had passed between the both of them, but I told them he didn't need to because I believed him. I told Mark what I discovered earlier that evening and why he had found me outside in his doorstep. He didn't say anything, but I knew he felt pity for me, which made it even worse. He cracked open a bottle of bourbon and handed me a glass. I spent that night at his place, drinking, and when I got tired of drinking, he let me crash in his guest room. The next morning, I called in late to work and waited until I was sure that she would be gone from the house before going back. I grabbed a change of clothes and went to work. When I returned, I pretended as if I didn't know anything and started ignoring her instead. I started sleeping on the couch in the living room instead of sleeping in our bedroom because I couldn't bear to sleep in the same bed as her. She figured that something was wrong and tried getting me to talk to her, but I didn't care. When she suggested that we go to therapy, I laughed in her face. This was someone I had been begging to go to therapy for years, but she had refused to listen to me and now she was asking me to go to therapy? I told her we were fine and that she was just overthinking things. I spurned all advances of lovemaking because it disgusted me to be in the same room with her, much less touch her intimately. But I wasn't ready to cut her off yet. I had to exact my own pound of flesh first. First of all, the suffering I had gone through because of her, I even more or less abandoned my dreams of going to college for her sake and amassed a lot of debt that I tried paying off for her. I decided to check if Sue was really my daughter first. When I told Mark what I wanted to do, he told me that he had no plans of taking Sue from me even if it turned out that she wasn't biologically mine because she was mine in all the sense that counted. I got the messages between her and Mark and the other guy, printed it out and sent it to an attorney. The attorney told me that I had a good case and that if I played my cards right, that I could even get her to pay alimony and child support because of the state of our finances and because she earned way more than I did. When I got the DNA results for Sue, luckily she was mine. I was relieved because I didn't know how I would have reacted otherwise. Before the divorce papers were ready to be served, I decided to play psychological games with her. I would mention how Mark and I spent the day together and how we were getting much closer and watch her reaction. Most of the time, she looked scared, like maybe I knew something, but I would pretend like I knew nothing. She tried harder to get me to be as responsive as I once was, but I had no interest. On the day I served her the papers, I had our parents over for dinner and invited Mark too. When I gave it to her in front of them, she flared up and told me I had no reason to get a divorce. I laughed at her and told her that it was only fitting for me to serve her divorce papers in front of the very people who had pushed us together in the first place. I showed everyone at the table evidence of her cheating and needless to say, chaos erupted. Her parents cut her off and my parents don't even talk to her anymore. After the divorce proceedings were over, my attorney was able to get her to pay child support and I got full custody of Sue. I threw a party where I handed out invitations on sheets with evidence of her cheating as the background design. Needless to say, the whole town now knows what a slut she was. Update. After I exposed her to everyone in town, she became a pariah. People are decent and old-fashioned here, so they all condemned her. 
The wife of the man she was cheating with found out and came to drag out in town. I heard there was a big showdown in front of her workplace and the woman assaulted her before leaving. She was then suspended at work for failing to show up for three days after that. She couldn't stand the shame after that, so she moved out of town. Last I heard of her, she was working at a dreary job somewhere in the city, and I get to stay in a town I love, while raising my beautiful daughter far away from her. Sue doesn't really understand what went wrong, and she doesn't really mind, but I had her see a therapist adjust to the fact that her mommy wasn't coming back. She's a well-adjusted child who's extremely smart. I learned how to code and eventually got a remote job that pays much more than what I was earning as a foreman, so I can afford nice things for my daughter and I now, and I can also spend more time with her. Every cent of child support my ex sends goes towards Sue's college fund. I won't have her go through what I went through.